So what I've got here is a light here at a 45 and a light here at a 45 and the camera in the center. You want to have the, the uh, lights at a 45 so they're coming in from the side like you're shooting either horizontal or vertical. It's the same kind of lighting. Now I'm on a uh, steady cam here to show you that the camera is at a little angle because the canvas is at an angle, right? So they basically, see the way the canvas is a little bit down? You want to get that as straight as possible. So as much up as you can and sometimes having the wire around the back of your easel is the safe way that, so your painting doesn't fall forward. I just try to skip out of that light there. There we go. And here, see your camera has to face down to the center of the photo. So basically, let's get our finger. The camera lens should be f focused right on the center of the painting. That's where it should actually be targeting. So the camera has to be a little higher and angled down towards the painting. Let's talk about the camera a little. Now, I saw a guy trying to uh, tell people how to do this. You center up your um, image to where you need it. You zoom in all the way. All the way in focus and then zoom out to where you need it okay so you're set to take your photo you want your camera on the timer so you don't shake the camera now now I would really advise people when you're taking photograph of your painting do one raw right in other words a, uh, the highest quality you can and then do one in a lower, lower format or a medium or lower format so you can put it on your website or send it to your association for some websites because they won't accept them if they're too high a resolution. So do a double photo. And you want to, to uh, go manual and bracket is the best way but if you don't know how to do that go automatic. But manual photography is better. Now this painting is, is um, a flat painting, so we're going to shoot that and then we'll put a high gloss in and I'll show you that one. So that you can see both paintings under uh, basically Cree lights that are daylight, uh, 5000K, at least 5000K, 5200K. And these are 1600 luminous, so you want to have plenty of light. It's like a 100 watt, they say it's equivalent to 100 watt bulb. But you want to go a little higher than that. But if you have 100 watt, you just got to bring your lights a little closer. And if they're daylight, your color's right. Okay? LED lights. Now my camera's on timer. It's focused and I have a bit of a battery flash. But let's ignore that for a sec. It's on a 10 second. So you have no movement. So that you have no shaking. And there you go. So, I put a shiny painting up, and if the lights are down in here with the shiny painting, they're reflecting. So they had to go up high and shine down and come in tighter. So they're not 45, they're very close to the, the, the um, easel now. So I've got them away in here, and they're shining down this way from up above. And what this is, uh, reduced the um, shine in the painting. But what's really important too is you have to do it in a room that's pretty dark and you can't have light in the back like a door from the kitchen with the light shining in, otherwise it will reflect as well. So look for the reflections from behind the camera, whether you have lights on in the ceilings behind you or you have a window behind, it's going to reflect as well. So you need to get it as dark as possible behind camera as you can. Just wanted to show you there's a reflection see, and that's the reflection of the garage light, so we'll switch that off. I don't have my lights on yet. Pretty good until you go down to this corner here. And what I was talking about earlier on, 
let's get a zoom in here and you can see down there in the corner there's a little bit of light on the edge here now that's actually coming from my kitchen door behind me being open and when I close it it goes away so every little bit of light you can remove from the building that's shining is is going to help the reason it's dark is uh, you have a preview button on these SLR cameras and there you can see why it's dark I have it set too low so we have to bring the settings up so what do I want to see in the end picture see that's called bracketing there see you can go from this and bracket down and do your shots all right you're getting a flashing in the uh, painting but it goes away when it goes to take the photo and there you go much better color let me put it back to it so I'm going to bracket it preview back to the camera setting I'm putting it on the, that's live on the LED now we're going to go one lighter two lighter one lighter take another shot and there you go there you have it I'm taking a photograph once more with the timer on now you have to have equal space on your settings here I'll show you that in a minute timer on there you go okay this is what we got this is uh, what we got see that's pretty good now what you want to do when you're framing is have because you're going to crop after you want to have this fairly equal around the side so the cropping is quite easily so it's an e easy crop and edit afterwards outside for you She is. How easy is that when you set up in the clouds? It's so easy to set up in a cloudy day. You don't have to worry about reflections too much. You might get a little bit of sky. You can bring it down to a dark area. Okay, what are the main essentials for um, photographing your art? One, when your camera's on manual, and it's an SLR camera, color balance with the white balance. That's number one. Number two, get a color card or a painting color code, which some of you have, and put it in front, take a photo, and then check the color. Number three, put your ESO as low as possible. If it's at 400, put it to 100. Try to keep your ESO as low as possible so you get better, better resolution. Number four, when photographing, zoom in, focus zoom out to the required framing number five always put your camera on timer so you don't shake it when you're doing it or move it when you click the button it might move the camera especially when you're on a low ease so the camera may be on a low shutter speed and that will cause a blur so put it on the timer self timer number six bracket your photos so that you have it at different different um, shades of exposure so bracket your photo a little bit so that you're covered number seven always shoot with a high resolution of raw and then a medium shot for other usage number eight always use daylight bulbs indoors about 5000 K that's the color of the light so that's important as well now you can buy them in the hardware store, those kind of bulbs. LED, daylight, 5000K, right? So the last thing is then uh, 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 number nine is go out on a cloudy day. And whatever these people tell you about going out in the sun, don't do it. Go out on a cloudy day, try to get your painting as vertical as possible so that it doesn't reflect the sky. So it's vertical as possible and it's up against maybe a green hedge or something. That's the best, and you have plenty of, of the cloud light spilling on it. And just photograph it with no lights, you get great results. And number 10, go shoot your art and have some fun.
There you go. My name's Willie D, and that's how you photograph your artwork properly. <laughs>